Hey what's up guys, it is Saiku Sam here and welcome back to the channel and today guys we're gonna be creating the blink ability from Tracer in Overwatch and we're gonna create this ability in Unity by using C Sharp purely and if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below and also make sure to subscribe so you stay up to tune for new content coming up soon and now with that being said let's create this ability Alright guys, so as you can see, we're already in Unity. I have a brand new project created for this little tutorial series right here. I am going to just expand the playlist that is already existent on the channel, uh, which is the C-Sharp tutorials in Unity. But we're basically just going to start with this new series in a quote mark, uh, which is going to be where we create some abilities from famous games, characters, and whatever kind of game you guys want to see. So if you have any mechanics, if you have any abilities, let me know in the comments down below and we'll create it together on YouTube or on stream too. So uh, I'm a live streamer now, as you guys know, uh, I'm a professional live streamer. <laughs> so anyway guys, we have a brand new scene here and a brand new project like I said. Um, in here we have a tracer folder which I created by myself, then we have the standard assets folder. Uh, which I imported by right-clicking into project tab and picking import package then characters so and we're actually using the standard assets because we have a rigid body FPS controller added to the scene as you can see and I also have a plane which is going to resemble a ground I can actually rename the plane to ground just to make it a little bit easier and I can rename the rigid body FPS controller to player uh, once again to make it a little bit easier so and that's pretty much it so we're pretty much ready for getting into it and before we get into the coding part I'm going to do a few final things here which is going to be to create a new game object which is going to be a cube uh, we can drag it down a little bit there we go just make sure that you can see it from your camera like that there we go that was behind the player from the beginning I don't know why uh, there we go and these I'm actually going to copy this in just a bit but these are basically going to resemble walls and the point of this is basically because the script is not going to allow the player to hop through walls because we obviously don't want the player to glitch outside of the map if they you know blink throughout the map uh, so we are obviously going to block that kind of movement to make sure that the game is not buggy and uh, you have to worry about less things instead of having a few bug reports from your players so like I said we're going to now copy and paste this cube and I'm gonna just place it pretty much here uh, this is just for testing purposes you know it's not it's nothing really serious um, you can use whatever kind of wall you want it doesn't really matter uh, and I'm actually going to rename this to wall oh now with one L there we go um, and that's pretty much it. So we we don't really have to tag them or anything. We're just going to use raycast to uh, calculate the difference or the distance between the player and the and the point which is going to be the destination for the player, which we're gonna get into a lot more soon. And speaking of which, we're now gonna create this script. I have a folder called Tracer, like I said, which I created, which is just for organization. You don't you you don't really have to use any folder that is called Tracer. I'm just doing it to make sure that I know where all my scripts are located. So inside of that folder, I'm gonna create a C sharp script and pretty much just call this Blink. Did I call it? Yeah, I called it Blink instead. <laughs> there we go. We'll delete that. Uh, there we go. C sharp script Blink. There we go. <laughs> Unity was lagging a little bit. All right, so now we're just going to add the Blink script into our player and double click on that to open it up in Visual Studio. There we go, just gonna take a bit, there we go. All right, so I'll start off with the basics. I'm gonna remove these two lines because we're gonna recreate them soon anyway. I want it to be personalized. <laughs> so now first and foremost, we are going to have a public float that is called distance. Oop. There we go. And this is going to be the distance that the player can blink through. By default, we're going to set it to 5.0 F. Since it's a float, it's better to have an F at the ending too. And to make it a decimal number instead. Alright, and next up, we're actually going to get into the void creation. So first and foremost, we can create the, the section where we actually read off the inputs from the player. Which is going to be inside of a void update. So we can say void update 
and this update is going to be or this void is going to be called every frame per second so we're not gonna have any trouble with that and now we can say if input like get mouse button down one then we're gonna call a uh, link forward pretty much and we're using a get mouse button because uh, or get mouse button down for that matter because we in overwatch when you're playing as tracer you have to click on right mouse button to actually use the blink ability which is resembled by this so as soon as you put a one inside of get mouse button down it resembles right mouse button and um, in that case we also call the blink forward function uh, so yeah and now we can create that blink forward function which is going to be public void blink forward and i'm not calling it just blink because the script itself is called blink and if we do call it blink the function itself we're gonna get an error like this uh there we go oh yeah there we go <laughs> i was trying to prove you guys something but yeah <laughs> it worked it worked um so yeah and now we're gonna create a raycast hit which is going to be called hit 2 and this is going to be the detector itself if if it's actually hitting a wall or any other kind of obstacle you might have in the way and uh, depending on that we're going to have two different scenarios which we're gonna get into but for now we can say raycast hit hit and um and then we can actually create a uh victor 3 destination for our player which is going to be a space in the world and this is going to be set by transform that position which is going to be the current position of the player plus transform that forward and this is going to be timed by distance, which is the public float variable we created earlier. Now, the reason I'm doing this is basically we're saying we're going to have a destination, which is going to be set to the current transform position, which is current player position. And we're going to plus that by transform that forward, which is a move function. So we're moving the player forward from the position he's in right now, which is here. And we're moving him forward by a amount of you know whatever float value it might be which is the distance float that we created here so that's kind of, of my way of referring to it if you have any questions regarding this let us know in the comments we're gonna help you out but it's very basic when you actually get the gist of it so now we can say if physics dot raycast let's see raycast there we go destination minus vector 3 dot up and we're saying minus because we want to negate the value so that it doesn't you know uh it just to make sure it works perfectly fine it's gonna make more sense when we get into game and then we're gonna say out hit all right let's see here what are we getting here uh, 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 uh the name destination oh i <laughs> there we go i spell it wrong <laughs> professional youtuber uh then we're gonna say destination equal to hit that point so that we actually link to the hit point uh, in case it doesn't you know detect anything and let's see here then we're gonna say transform that position equal to destination destination there we go. and we're saying this because we want to make sure that we're setting uh, we're actually blinking the player which is basically by editing the position of the current position of the player to destination so now we're gonna create the other scenario where we actually find something in the in the middle of the way that is intersecting our player from reaching point a to point b which is the current position to actually the distance or the destination and we're gonna set it by saying if physics dot line cast i guess we could use and then we can say transform that position uh destination and then out hit once again there we go and i'm gonna go through these this code in just a bit but we're gonna say destination i always say destination i don't know why destination equal to transform that position oh my god i'm spelling everything wrong transform that position <laughs> plus transform uh the forward and then times in parentheses we're going to say hit that distance minus one F. One F should be enough. So what we're doing here, we're creating a new physics function called linecast and we're saying transform that position. This is going to be sent from transform that position until it reaches destination, which is set here. 
and then we're saying just we're gonna call hit so that we check if the raycast is actually being hit or the physics line cast is being hit and in case it is it means something is intersecting the way so then we're setting the destination which we're going to blink the player to uh, into the current position of the player plus transform that forward so we're we're still forwarding the player right we're still moving the player forward but this time we're timing it by hit distance which is going to be the the distance between the player's current position until when it actually hits this intersecting obstacle minus one and why we're saying one minus one is basically this is like a value so that we don't spawn right inside of that object right so in in case we're intersecting a wall which the player cannot jump through then we're saying okay so the player is going to spawn before the wall but make sure that it's not right inside of the wall like we don't want the face of the player to be zero units away from the wall because it looks weird and it's kind of gonna transform the player a little bit back so instead of that we're just saying basically you know what transform it like blink the player forward but blink it so that he reaches the destination which is the intersecting obstacle but make sure it's not inside of that object to make sure it's not bugging out and now guys i just want to make a couple of modifications before we get into unity to test this out uh, first and foremost we want to move the if physics line cast which is the part where an intersection is actually found above the other one and the reason i'm doing this is basically because we want to make sure that unity first prioritizes if there actually is an obstacle in between which is intersecting if not then we're just going to blink through right and if there is one then this is going to be prioritized which is going to be the one that is intersecting and to make sure that we understand we can actually add a comment that is called intersecting or maybe obstacle found to be intersecting there we go and for the other one we can just say no obstacles found there we go and this is basically literally just for uh, for the sake of prioritizing this first. And if we don't do it, Unity is not actually going to read it, which might be which might sound a little bit stupid, but it's actually logical because then this part, this section of the code, is more prioritized than this because it falls down below this. So what we're gonna do next, the second modification, is basically inside of no obstacles found, we're going to set destination equal to hit top point, which is correct. And we're also going to add destination equal or destination dot y equal to a very small number like 0.5f. And the reason we're doing this modification is because we want to make sure that there is a solid ground, solid surface for the player to spawn on as soon as he or she, you know, blinks. And if we don't do this, it might happen sometimes that Unity or like the player is actually blinking forward correctly, but he falls through the ground because there he pretty much blinks into the ground. And by setting a constant destination y axis value as we are doing here, we're saying no way, like there is no way that this is going to happen now. So that's pretty much it. It's a very easy reason why we're adding it and it's a very logical reason why we're actually moving this above. I should have thought of it earlier, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Like even if we tested it out and it didn't work, which it wouldn't work, then we would just learn from the mistake. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, now we're gonna go into Unity and we're gonna set this to play. And let's see how this works. So if I click the right mouse button, you can see that we're kind of blinking forward. It's quite robust, but it looks good. And you can see that it's, you know, the rotation is changing, obviously, depending on where the player is facing. And now the most important part, are we going to intersect this wall in front of me or are we not going to do it? So I'm going to blink a few times and boom. So we spawn now in front of the wall. And if I try blinking through, it won't let me. As you can see here in the right panel in the scene window here, you can see that the player is slightly moving, right? You can see the axis moving like this like boom right it's shaking but it's obviously trying to blink me forward but it's not working although it is blinking me forward but it's blinking me until i reach this wall so i'm i'm in no way going to be able to pass this wall by blinking so i just have to walk like around it and the same thing happens here you can try blinking like horizontally vertically whatever like jump through but it's, it's not going to work 
and um, that's pretty much the point so I'm really happy and I'm really satisfied that this is working but yeah guys this is pretty much it it was actually very easy to create this uh, I found a tutorial online too for teleporting which I followed a little bit and learned about line cast more I didn't use line cast before a lot but it seems that it's very very useful as you can see we can easily detect any kind of object that is you know intersecting in our way uh, this is just a little bit of mathematical function and if you need any help with this, if you need any help with anything at all, let us know in the comments. We're also more active on Discord, so we have a Discord server which is going to be linked in the description down below and in, and in the pinned comment too. I'm gonna try to not forget that. <laughs> and um, so if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, feedback, whatever it might be, let us know. Hit me up and um, we're gonna help you guys out. So. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this brand new episode of C Sharp Tutorials in Unity. If you did, and if you have any feedback on what kind of, you know, ability we should cover up in next episode, etc., let us know in the comments. It's very important for me to actually hear from you guys because you guys are the audience. And now, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the thumbs up button. It's very supportive. And um, subscribe to make sure you stay up to tune for new content like this. We're going to have a lot of new tutorials coming up. It's, like I said, if you guys have any abilities you would like me to cover up, any characteristics you want me to cover up, let me know. I'm going to do it. And um, hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below. And I will catch you guys either in Discord or in the comment section. See you guys. Bye-bye.